Bag. I want the bag. Work my way from a garden to a track. Flip it from a track to a plot full of acres. Do it for the farmers and the producers and the makers. What we even here for? Occasionally I ask it. I know it's more than struggling, anticipating the casket. Reap what we sow. I'm trying to fill up my basket. Life's a plantation. I self law and master. Over the plot, I've been granted on this planet Now we're slanted, cause the chosen been supplanted But if you overstand it, it was spoken Fractured, but we ain't broken Even though some would rather play the role of token We growing Black through the essence of a presence We carry the blood of gods, we carry the mind of peasants Rich black gardens, future look more like Eden Multiply seeds like the seed banks in Sweden Rep my planners on plan according to season Be one code Switching it up is treason. Black power, family, what we eat. Either we get fed or we feed. What's growing on? What's growing on? What is growing on? Welcome back to B1 Ag, the Daily Bread Podcast. I'm your boy, John Henry Harris. I'm holding down the fort tonight. Uh, everyone, uh, Farmer Brian MC, he is uh, dealing, he's under the weather, y'all. And if y'all could, y'all please send them some of y'all healing vibrations, your love. Uh, just hit them up at b1aghiphop at gmail.com and just send them that love, y'all. Hit them up at b1aghiphop at gmail.com. And let Farmer Brian know that, you know, you're praying for him, you're hoping for him to pull through. It's not very serious, but it's enough to keep him off of the podcast. So we want to make sure that we hold him up and uh give them my best send them my best vibrations all right y'all now here at b1 ag we focus on black agriculture as it deals with agricultural production education marketing health food nutrition and economics all for the black family and for the black community welcome black to the garden tonight we're going to talk about product of the usa now the usda Uh, We trust the USDA that they are going to inspect our food and make sure that we are getting the highest quality of food. So therefore, when when most of us go to the store and we see that stamp, bam, product of the United States of America or made in the USA, we take we we expect that meat to be of high quality and born and raised and processed in this country. Because the USDA itself holds itself to that standard. They hold themselves to, to have that gold standard. Uh, I just want to read for y'all the, uh, this is part of the mission statement of the USDA to provide leadership on food, agriculture, natural resources, rural development, nutrition, and related issues based on sound public policy, the best available science, and efficient management. This is what they promised to us, y'all. This is what they promised to us. Now, when it comes to the product of the USA, things are starting to change. Under the current rules, beef that comes from many countries, but particularly Canada and Mexico, is considered to be a product of the United States if it has been processed within the country. And not just processed, if we just get this meat and bring it over to America and just package it here in America. Right now, these products, these beef and pork products can voluntarily bear the product of the USA or made in the USA marker. Now, the USDA, the USDA, they want to know your, they want your, your, your feedback. They ask, if you care where your meat comes from? Do you care if uh, the state that you eat was is from uh, your rug way or you know, anywhere across the globe? Do you care? Does it, does it that stamp of pre- made in America, a product of USA, what does that mean to you? The USDA wants to know. Because uh, right now, this is from Tom Vilsack, the Agriculture Secretary. He told the House Agriculture Committee, if there's a label on a pound of ground beef that says product of the USA, 
we want to make sure that consumers understand precisely what that means. So we're in the process of doing a fairly extensive survey to find out if consumers understand what that means and whether they place value on it. Now for American producers, that product of the USA, it, it, it there's a lot of value to that because it it gives you the it gives you this uh, the sense of this is a superior product. This has gone through strict testing. This product is been grown the right way. It's been fed the right things. You can trust this product. But as the way, as I just showed y'all before, as the rule under the current rules, it can be considered a product of the United States if it's just been processed within the country. And not just processed, but also just packaged in the country. So this meat can come in from all over the country, from all over the world, Australia, a rugway, you know, anywhere, you know, from steers and pigs that have lived and died from all over the country and then say that they are a product of the United States. It's very misleading. However, the uh, USDA, they need your feedback. So y'all, B1 Ag family, I'm just like uh, Marshawn Lynch running back for the Seattle Seahawks and uh, Oakland Raiders. You know, I'm about that action. You know, it's, it's a call to action tonight, y'all. Uh, we need you to let the USDA know if you care whether that meat comes from the United States or not. Now, they have uh, the USDA has actually put out a survey where you can submit a formal comment and let them know exactly what you think about this meat. You know, whether it's from the USA or whether it's just some mystery meat from anywhere across the United States. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the link to this uh, survey so you can let the USDA know exactly if you, if it matters to you, you know, where this meat comes from. On the screen now, this is the uh, Federal Register. This is the survey. And at the, on the banner at the bottom of the screen, this is the URL to where you can actually type, put this URL in your search bar and go directly to this page and you see the green, there's a green uh, button that says submit a formal comment. The USDA wants to hear from you. And B1 Ag family, the USDA needs to hear from us. They need to, we need to let the USDA know exactly what we think and how we feel. Now, for those watching us live right now, salute. Welcome everyone. I'm glad to see you here tonight. And uh, I'm going to put a link, the direct link uh, to this survey in the live chat on YouTube as well as Facebook. So y'all, so I'm trying to make it easy for you. Just click on that link, whether you're watching us live right now on B1 Ag Daily Bread Podcast on YouTube and on Facebook. And of course, I need y'all to like, share, and subscribe. We need help, y'all. We want to bring, continue bringing you this message. We want to push this black algorithm to fight the, the, the algorithm. We want to push this notion that we can grow our own food. We can be self-sustainable. We can take care of ourselves. It's a power move. It's a survival skill. This is something that we must do for ourselves. I don't know about y'all. Hey, I looked at the gas. The gas prices uh, where I'm at, it's four ninety nine a gallon. I mean, three ninety nine a gallon. Three dollars ninety nine cent a gallon. The Dollar Tree is now dollar twenty five. Food prices are rising. You know they're giving us uh, 
cheaper meat from wherever it comes from and then trying to put this product of the USA stamp and give you premium prices. Let's let the USDA, the, the USDA know exactly how we feel about that. Let them know exactly how we feel about that. And also in the description of this video, y'all, there's a link to the Grow Hard Garden Challenge 22. It's free. Let's sign up. Let's get our children involved. Let's get families involved. Let's get neighborhoods involved. Let's get your uh, athletic teams involved. Let's get your cheerleaders involved. And let's show the world that we can grow hard and grow harder. That we can look at, we can take our these hands and these natural elements that have been bestowed upon us and grow our own food. And not only grow our own food, hey, we're going to do it the fly way. And we want to push this and show and, and flood the internet with images of us doing what we do best. And that's growing. Growing hard. Let's give our children something to do. Let's teach them something. Let's teach them how to grow their own food. Let's teach them how to be food secure. And let's also show them how to nurture you know, show them patience, delayed gratification. These are all great things that we can show our young, our youth, all from growing our own food. And plus introduce them to a survival skill. And this is also a marketable skill that they can use to make money. Let's give our children something to look for. Let's give our children something to work for. But tonight, we need you. We need you. You know how like they used to have those old uh, posters. Uh, we need you. We need you. We need you. Be one ad. Our family. Be one family. We need you to let the gov the USDA know how you feel about meat that comes from another country and and being stamped with a product of the USA. It's very misleading. It's very misleading, y'all. And then plus, we, and then we need to know this because, again, a lot of the times when it says product of the USA, it comes with a premium stamp. This is what we're talking about right here. Product of USA. When you see that in your stores, it would have you think that, okay, the USDA is properly and thoroughly examined this meat. It was grown here in the United States. Uh, it's being fed the right, the, the right and the best grains. Uh, there have been no corners cut. And also, and of course, it's also going to reflect in the price. But everywhere across the world, they do not hold themselves to the same standard as the USDA. And that's just a known fact. They don't. And with, and with today's supply chain issues, it's getting even harder for the USDA to hold up their own standards because there's just not enough people to check everything. And the, and the supply is backed up. Do you care? where your beef comes from. Do you care? Do you care? Again, this is the link where you can let the government know how you feel about where your beef comes from. Click that green button right there. It says, you know, submit a formal comment. That's all you need to do. Click that button and tell them what you know. Right now, there's only like, there's less than 300 comments. We need to flood this uh, this survey and let them know what we think. How, whatever you think. If you don't care, let them know. If you care, let them know. This is how things get swept under the rug. This is how laws are passed up under our noses. You know, they say, yeah, we made it public but they don't make it public and 
in, in in a public way. They make it public. Yeah, it's a public survey, but this isn't on the news. They haven't put this survey out there and let everyone know that uh, the USDA wants to know what you think. But here at B1 Ag, we care about the food we eat. We, forget, we care about the food that is fed to our families and our youth and our children and our cousins and our loved ones. And we need you to give the USDA your opinion. This is something we must do, y'all. The USDA asked if you care where your meat comes from. I do. That was the beauty of growing up with my grandfather, farming with my grandfather growing up. He had cows. Now, our, the meat that we raised for us was always different from the meat that was in the store. You know, in the store, to meat, to, to add weight, they would add grease and also animal blood to the meat for weight. The meat that we, my grandfather, from my grandfather's cows, there wasn't a lot of grease coming out of that. There wasn't no blood coming out of that meat. And I know that was great meat because you know what? I fed it. I fed it. I fed it the, that corn. I fed it its grains. When we cut down our, our stalks, our corn crops, and we cut those stalks down, we fed those stalks, those corn stalks, to the cows. We had separated land just for them to eat off of, just for them to graze. I gave that cow its water. I know what that cow ate. That's the most food secure you can be when you know exactly what's going into the production of your food because it came from your hands. Honestly, when you go to the store, you don't know what's been going on. It's been processed. That's why it's important that we get black to the garden. That's why we, that's, a, that's why this is uh farmer Brown and I, and, and my mission, we got to get black to the garden. So everybody like, share, subscribe, B1 Ag Daily Bread Podcast on YouTube. We need to get to a thousand subscribers, y'all. That's it. We just need to get to a thousand. Once we get to a thousand subscribers, the gate opens up and we're able to do a lot more as far as presenting you content. Right now, the shackles are on. The algorithm, it, 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 the algorithm is winning. But we're going to continue to fight against that algorithm by pushing this algorithm. We must be more conscious of the food that we eat because it's getting strange, y'all. We already we, we've done a lot of stories about the fake meat and everything that's going on. This fake food, plant based, lab based. You know, however you feel about it, we need to be aware. We still need to be aware. Awareness is key. What's happening? 100% Rotten Podcast. Salute to Erica. Miss Tiffany Walker, salute. Good evening. Nicole Noel, FLG TV. Yes, sir. Kev Ross. Salute to everyone that's watching live right now. Like, share, and subscribe, y'all. Tell a friend, tell a friend, tell a friend, tell a friend to tell another friend. Because we are getting black to the garden again and again. Until we can be self-sustainable, feed ourselves, and also become more healthy and vibrate at our highest. During these days and times, it's more important than ever that we vibrate at our highest and the way and the number one way we can do that is to eat fresh healthy foods you can learn how to grow your own food at healthyblackfood.com at healthyblackfood.com we teach a course farmer brown and i will teach a course how to grow your own food we break it down to you step by step. 
whether you have a lot of land or you live in an apartment and all you have is your, 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 your patio, your balcony, your porch. We show you how you can grow food. You don't need to have a big farm to grow your own food. You don't need to have an acre, two acres. If all you have is those leftover milk crates from the milk crate challenge, we can show we show you how to grow your own food in milk crates. If all you have is pots, we show you how to uh, and, and, and buckets. We show you how to grow your own food. We even show you how to grow your own food in a in in a, in a straw hay in a, in a in a bale of hay. You can substitute dirt with a bale of hay or even water. It's more important than ever, y'all. We see these prices at the gas pump rising. We see these prices at the grocery store rising. They're trying to price us out of the market. We see the real estate prices rising. At the end of the day, a lot of people are going to be priced out of the store. They're being priced out of the restaurants. Inflation. One of the biggest lessons I learned when I went to college, and I never realized it until I went to college, was how powerful and how lucky I was growing up to not have my ability to eat depend on how much money was in my pocket. I'm trying to tell you, I grew up eating very well. I'm talking about three, four course breakfasts, lunches, and dinners every single day. I was out there working in the field, so we had to eat that way. Because if I didn't eat that way, surely I was going to pass out in that field working. But we had food. Even if we had no money in our pockets, we ate like kings. And this is a power, this is a right that I would like our whole community to be able to grasp, hold, and, and own for themselves. Because that's power. We all got to eat, y'all. We all got to eat. And we don't want to wait till it gets, uh, till the prices get too far out. Or the store or the shelves get too empty for us to get these seeds in the ground. That's why it's important that we participate in the Grow Hard Challenge, the, 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 the Grow Hard Garden Challenge 2022. Here is the link. This is the link to the Eventbrite page. It's free. Sign up. It breaks down exactly what you need to do. Send in your pictures. We're going to publish the pictures. We want everybody to see. We're going to push this algorithm with this algorithm. Show the world that we can grow. No more sad stories of stunted growth or us killing ourselves. We're going to show the world we can grow. Growth, growth, self-sustainability, that's power. He who feeds you, leads you. Let's feed ourselves. We all have a place at the table and we can all reap this grand harvest. Now that event bright link to the Grow Hard Garden Challenge for 2022, again, for our live viewers on YouTube and Facebook, I'm putting that in the uh, in the live chat as well. I'm putting this in the live chat as well. All you got to do is click on it, sign up. It's free. This is free. We want to make a, we want to make you the superstar. We want to make you the superstar, not for no dance on TikTok, not for uh, committing some crime. Not even for making a touchdown or a, or a half court three point basket. We want to make you the star for growing hard, for making your for for growing your own food. 
for being able to feed yourself, sustain yourself, become more self-sufficient. That's the goal, y'all. That is the goal. Ken Ross says gas is approaching $7 in California. Goodness gracious. I don't ever want to see nothing like that. I tell you what, gas gets $7. I'm really going to be healthy because I'm walking everywhere. I'm not driving anywhere. I'm walking. I'm going to have me an apple or some bananas or something in my hand to, 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 to help give me energy along my way. Straight up. Now, what we're talking about tonight is the USA wants to know from you. Yeah, you, 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 all of y'all watching. Do you care if your meat, do you care where your meat comes from? Do you care? You know, if you go to the store and you see that product of the USA or made in the USA, you know, that implies that this food has been thoroughly inspected, grown in, the, in this country, and raised properly with strict guidelines. However, under the current rules, beef that comes from many other countries, Uruguay, uh, Australia, you know, pork that comes from other countries, Mexico, Canada, it can be considered a product of the United States if it's been processed in the country or even just packaged. This is very misleading, y'all. And we need you to go to this URL and submit a formal comment on what you, and to tell the USDA exactly how you feel about the product of USA status and where, and, and if you care where your meat comes from. I know firsthand through firsthand knowledge of growing up farming with my grandfather, the importance of knowing where your food comes from. I know. And also, you know, we, we used to, we only used to kill one cow a year, one cow a year. And that one cow provided us with enough beef for the entire year, mm -hmm. one cow. Now you think about how much you spend on steaks and hamburgers, going out to these uh, expensive uh, steak houses, or even just hitting up the 99 cent menu in this uh, McDonald's and Burger King and all these other fast food restaurants where you may have some beef in there where one cow can sustain your whole family for the whole year. And not just our immediate family. I'm talking about our cousins, my aunts, fed a lot, that one cow fed a lot of people. And plus we fed that cow, we raised that cow. We gave it its water. We had the land where it grazed. I know what that cow ate because I fed it to him. I fed it those corn, those corn stalks. I fed it its corn, the grains, the hay. I gave it to it. And please, I mean, I know, you know, how people treat their pets. You know, you're going to treat something that you're going to eat even better. I even gave it names and I would talk to it like, boy, Cecil, I can't wait till you get fat enough to eat. <laughs> hey, I let that cow know. I, I give it love and give it all the attention and food and water it wanted. Because I know, you know, when, when it's time, we're going to take it to that slaughterhouse and they're going to come out in these white and pink packages and fill up our deep freezers. And we're going to eat good for the entire year. And this is power that I would like all of us to have. But if we do have to go to the grocery store to get our meat, we need to be able to make informed decisions, not be misled, you know, 
not having us think one thing when another is true. And I know a lot of us are trying to stay away from, you know, red meat and pork, and that is great. I, I also encourage that as well. But for the ones that do eat meat or whatever you eat, even if it's not me, we need to have a clear understanding and knowledge of where our food comes from, whether it's meat or even just produce, fruits and vegetables. We need to know where that comes from, where it comes from. And it'd be even better if it comes from our own yards, our own gardens, our, our own farms. You know, having food cultivated by us. Just like we mastered all these sports. Hey, we're the masters of growing food. We were at one point in time in this country. That's how Black Wall Street was built. Off the farmers. And this is the idea that I, I that we really push at B1AG is that if you ain't eating, you ain't going to do nothing. You can be Jordan, but if you ain't eating, he ain't going to play. You can be LeBron, but if LeBron doesn't, LeBron spends over a million dollars on his body every year, which includes, you know, having a personal chef and watching what he eats, only eating the best things. It's that important. I don't care if you're an auto mechanic. You need to eat the best food so you can be the best auto mechanic you can be. You need to drink the cleanest water so you can be the best auto mechanic or whatever your occupation is. Just to be the best human possible to vibrate at your highest. We need to be ingesting the best foods and water and, and juices possible. I know Wu-Tang Wu -Tang claim made that song, cash rules everything around me. No, food rules everything around me. Everything goes back to the food. Everything goes back to food because everybody must eat. We all got to eat. Now, this isn't a petition, y'all. This is just a leave your comment. Tell the USDA how you feel about this uh, meat that they're saying is, uh, is from the United States, but it's not. And this is for a limited time, y'all. This, uh, how many more days? Let me check and see how many more days we have until we can give our feedback. Because you need to, uh, the, this this uh, comment, they're, they're, submit, they're accepting comments until on or before April 4th of 2022. So we got less than a month. We have less than a month to let the USDA know how we feel. How do you feel? Ask your kids, ask your loved ones, how do you feel? Do you care about where your meat comes from? I do. And I think most of us do as well. Be sure to look in the description of this video on YouTube. And it has links to this uh, survey. We have direct links to the Grow Hard Garden Challenge of 2022. If you want to support this uh, channel, all you have to do, if you want to support the channel, you can donate to our cash app at dollar sign B1 Ag Hip Hop. But the biggest way you can support us is to like, share, and subscribe. And that again is free of charge. Like, share, and subscribe. I just wanted to put that on y'all brain like a little bit today, y'all. Do you care where your meat comes from? The USDA, the actual USDA, they want to know.
you want to find a black farmer near you, here is the URL. If you got to stop this and write this down so you can put it in your computer and your search bar, do that. Find a black farmer near you. Support that black farmer. Spend money with that black farmer. Ask that black farmer, how can I do this too? What can I grow for myself? Make a friend. Because the emptier those shelves are, you'll, the more you'll realize that our black farmers, they are the real superheroes in our community. They are the real Avengers. They are first line of defense against hunger and food insecurity. Find a black farmer, learn how to grow for yourself. Healthyblackfood.com, y'all. Learn how to grow for yourself. We're pushing the black algorithm, fighting against the algorithm that pushes nothing but negative images to us all day, every day. You want to show them a new picture, give them new visions. Agriculture is revitalizing urban cities all across this country. And we need more. We must continue to grow. Pushing the black algorithm. Ancestors, they master the systems. We raising your bosses, no victims. Planting that knowledge curriculum. Blessing the boots with the nutrients. The darker the very black new begins. Dropping receipts like I'm Julian. The streets with that food like Peruvian. Trapping the lunch and the fruits and them veggies. CSA boxes, my package is heavy. Ship across town in the bed of my Chevy. Printing them up, growing hard for that baby. If you stay ready, you ain't gotta scramble. Bet on black farmers and growers, no gamble. We came in our bank cause the game is in shambles. Blessed with that melanin, carry the mantle. Mothers and fathers of civilization. Black to the garden with crew cultivation Building back better through black innovation Be one community, go with the nation Genetically designed to be the dopest Open that growth mindset Codified, now we focus Farming on Back on track on track Be the fan, break bread with them Pushing that Back on track on track Pushing that B1 algorithm Now we Watch me get them, watch me get them Pushing that Back on track Pushing that B1 algorithm Rhythm on track on track Be the fan that's what's up y'all b1 ag daily bread podcast i'm john henry harris here at b1 ag we're pushing ag solutions practical agricultural solutions to fight uh, these issues that we have these grocery stores are empty. The shelves are empty. They're becoming more and more sparse. Food prices are going up. It's time to put these seeds in the mud. It's time to grow our own food. Grow harder. The Grow Hard Garden Challenge 2022. Go to Eventbrite. Here is the URL. Sign up. It's free. Participate. Get our youth to participate. Let's show them how to grow. Let's learn how to grow. Let's increase how much we produce. This is a, this is about having a producer mindset. We've let them trick us into being into having a consumer mindset where we think we have to just go buy everything. It's not. It's time to break that chain from our minds. Re just reconstruct, reconfigure ourselves back to where we produce. We are producers. We make it. We make it. And when you make it, you're going to make it. When you're someone that produces, you're going to make it. That's just how it goes. Well, if you can, if you can do it for yourself, you're going to make it. And we want to see as many people make it as possible. Because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, If you really, 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 really want to know something. I mean, you really want to know something. Learn how to grow something.
I'm John Henry Harris here holding on the fort with B1 Ag Daily Bread Podcast. Hey, don't forget, go to holla at us at B1AgHipHop at gmail.com. Tell Farmer to send love and uh, healing to Farmer Brown so he can get him back on here. We got to continue this mission, y'all. But we got a lot of surprises coming uh, in the future. We're working hard. And we're going to continue again to push this black algorithm, the fight against the algorithm. Because at the end of the day, we all got to eat. Proceed through the rest of this week in love. Give somebody a hug. Wiggle your toes in the grass. Let the rain hit you on the face. Bathe in the sunshine. Until next time, be one act data bread podcast. I'm John Henry Harris. I'm out. Peace.